Thanks for staying with us. So, on, still on this minimum wage saga, the federal government has offered 62,000 naira as the new minimum wage, while Labour is insisting on 250,000. Uh, according to them, the recommendations will be forwarded to Mr. President, who is expected to send an executive bill on the National Assembly for legislative action. Um, so, I know there's supposed to be a meeting today. Uh, we don't know at the head that the Labour has they're not in town, but um, after several hours of negotiations on Friday, the federal government and the organised private sector have. Um, increased their own to 62,000 up from the previous 60,000 era offer, while the board came down to 250,000, um, decreased from the 494,000. Now, we have with us, with us, uh, Mr. Malakai Ugumadu, is constitutional lawyer, former president of the Committee for the Defense of Human Rights. To, he uh, to hear his thoughts on this issue of minimum wage, welcome, sir, to the show. Thank you. I'm delighted welcome, to be Good. here. So a lot has been said about the minimum wage. Every, everybody has their own side. Labor has their strong point because of the broke, when they broke down how, why, how they arrived at that figure, it made quite a bit of sense. The, the government is saying, we, we can't afford it. There's no where the money is. I don't have the money. Um, also, some, some states are saying, I can't even afford that. You know, the 30,000 minimum wage, some states have not been able to pay till tomorrow. So, and other states, I you know Lagos State government is paying different things. So, in your view, what do you make of this entire back and forth, and how do we find a truce or meet a truce? Well, again, thank you for having me. I think that... Um, for me, what is missing is that consensus, that common ground. Um, it is good that it has been subjected to this fought and back, but the law does not envisage that it should be attended by these debates. Ideally, there ought to be a consensus even before the expiration of the time lag within which uh, a prevailing minimum wage is expected to lapse. That is five years, according to the law. But what we have seen over time is that every benefit to the Nigerian people has always been a function of struggles. Mm. And uh, it is literally taken for granted that Nigerian people are not entitled to these demands. And therefore, government on its side waits until organized labor in particular, begin to agitate. This is a hangover of the experience of the Nigerian worker, even before colonial era. Nigeria was colonized. The colonial masters saw the people, the first generation of workers, as mere slaves. This has been documented, who are not entitled to anything. Mm. And they got nothing until they agitated. We cannot forget the modus of this world. That was transferred to the mentality that the military also uh, you know, inherited, up to the point when about nine states in the northern uh, part of this country indicated that they cannot pay what was then referred to as the, their own minimum wage. And the law way, as we have it today, referencing the minimum wage Act actually makes it an offense for any part of the government, either federal or the federating unit, to, uh, you know, uh, to pull out mm. from the payment of minimum wage. In short, it criminalizes it, you know, to say that upon conviction, if you are unable to pay the prescribed minimum wage, you will be liable to social and so. So, well, I, I think that um, what is coming out all of all of this debate is that we have largely mismanaged ourselves. We have mismanaged our resources. Mm. And that we may not be able to continue the way in this trajectory, except people really sit down and become as resourceful as they ought to be in meeting the demands okay. of the people. All right. Maka? Yes. OK, no, you can go. I should go. Okay, so um, for me, what I'm looking at particularly in this whole matter, because I just feel like for government, they can always squeeze out money from anywhere. They cannot drive a certain SUVs or change their cars or refurbish their offices to be able to pay these monies. I'm more concerned about the private sector, right? We know that Nigeria is made up of a lot of SMEs, small business owners, even individuals that people we on the tables. We, we have drivers. We have um, um, yes, helps at books. home and stuff, right? So how 
are people supposed to make uh, pay this monies? Because when you look at when you really look at the business structures of most businesses, they are not really making money. They are not yeah. really in business. Mm -hmm. They are just there, even trying to uh, um, yes, even right. trying to you know make ends meet. How are they supposed to meet up with it? Because yeah. we, we need to balance this whole. I like thing. it to lay off staff. Yeah. So well, um, that's a very important question because uh, whether we like it or not, there's very little you can do about the reality and the state of our economy. Mm. In short, from the grapevine, the government is already saying that if you compel us to do this, about 40% of our workforce will have to go. Simple. Now, these are functions of negotiations and discussion. Mm. But as Nigerians, as the victims of the absence of leadership in this country, what we can quickly put on the table is to say that government can actually prioritize the need of the Nigerian people as against the greed of state actors. Mm. And what I mean by that is this. Imagine if, even for the private sector, mm. imagine if the government can make the, uh, the cost of doing business a lot more easier mm. and cheaper. Mm. What are we doing about power, for instance? This is what kill a lot of businesses in this country. Mm. What about the interest rates that with which mm. or at which they borrow uh, money, and so if they can find it? What about subsidy? This debate about subsidy, we cannot afford to run away from it because all over the world, even in civilized nations, what we know that assists the, the masses is the subsidy of government, whether in education or in agriculture or whatever resources that they have. Now, this idea of taking it out completely and at the same time increasing tariff in electricity and impounding and compounding uh, taxes mm. it is such that makes business completely impracticable for even the private sector. Mm -hmm. And I've, I'm proposing that it is not just sufficient to say, oh, no, private sectors cannot survive. The private sectors cannot survive because of underlying factors. Those factors that have you know, made business almost impracticable in our society. And I guess that if we remain uh, conscious and yeah. sensitive to this, uh, we may be able to meet ourselves at some point. Okay. I'm constantly faulting NLC and TUC for advancing a cause around minimum wage alone. Are they, just as you mentioned, there are other factors affecting businesses that you'd expect that they will constantly be engaging government on improving. One of them is security because most businesses now provide their own security. Yeah. And mm -hmm. because of that extra cost at downsizing. Can NLC just, you know, not make their business around every five, five years minimum wage alone? So that in between those years, NLC is still seen as active, as opposed to just... When you push money. that further, NLC will always push tell it. you that, well, 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 that uh, they are not uh, policy makers. Mm. And they are there to ensure the interest that. of their members. Uh, forgetting that if you... If you're cutting the tree and refuse to watch the direction of the field, you will be twice uh, as disadvantaged as if you took on the whole thing together. Here is the point. Uh, whether we like it or not, it has come to become a fact in our situation, in our economy, that this government cannot completely ignore the agitation of labor. Labor, on the other hand, will also understand that the same government that have shown this level of insensitivity cannot be completely left alone. Otherwise, you will gradually begin to sound recondant in the ears of the people you are even trying to assist. And, and I guess that this is already happening. So much trust has been lost. So many people just wait to hear when they are going to call off strikes. And uh, gone are those days when they are able to sustain with, uh, with uh, equal momentum the agitations that make governments sit up. Uh, and I therefore would suggest that the dialogue should be the way to go, but it must be sincere, it must be purposeful, and it must be targeted at a realistic output. 
that will uh, um, that will enable it be right. a win-win situation. Okay, yes, sir. So, uh, do you blame Labour for insisting that um, this money must increase? Uh, you know, if you follow their arguments, they say that we have our executives, we have our judiciary, we have our legislatures who are earning how many times over what the minimum wage is, and they are currently in this situation. They understand the inflation that is going on. And they're expecting the workers to just go with almost nothing in the face of this. The only reason they're insisting on this is because they also see the lo a lot of wastage that is being done in, uh, you know, cost of governance. It, there's a lot of wastage going on there. Do you think the governors truly cannot pay this minimum wage if they decide to cut down on some of their extra expenses? Let me also tell you, uh, a few uh, days ago, we had data of people who spent, uh, governors who spent money on refreshments <coughs> running into billions of naira. Why do we still have, in a country as poor as we are right now, forget our resources because it's not you know, paying off, as uh, poor as we are using money, instead of paying out of pocket, they are using taxpayers' money to buy refreshments for people who are visiting them while they are working in office, after collecting their salary and their bonuses. You have made my, my, my answer very simple. And uh, I'd like to start from where you you know, where you commenced your comment. I, I cannot blame Labour. On the contrary, I heap the blame on government. And I had tried to make preliminary remarks here, suggesting that, look, if we prioritize the need of the people and reduce the desire to satisfy the greed of the ruling class, we will get this thing right. Uh, come to think of it, um, so many states in this country are already paying what was uh, above what was uh, the minimum wage. Mm -hmm. How are they doing it? I mean, Edo is not the, I'm from Delta State, Edo is the neighboring country. I, I mean, the neighboring state is not, um, it's not very rich in terms of resources. Mm. But so much has been reorganized along the line of uh, productivity mm -hmm. to be able to show up their revenue with a view to prioritizing the pay of the, of the people. So you go to Nasara State, for instance, only recently, the lithium uh, processing plant mm. was commissioned. That was just in May here. And the statistics that was read out indicated that if they stayed on course on that alone, the state was going to be able to uh, even employ more workers. So for me, that for, that for me, sir, is yeah. a real issue. Yes. Because it's one thing for federal government to say something. It's another thing for the state government to actually do. So for me, the onus really is on the state on government. On the state government. Mm -hmm. They need to see how they can show up their IGR to be able to go to some states. I, I hear that Lagos is paying as much as 70000 Yes. So it's not even, they're not, they're not even in that, in that conversation. Not at so all. the truth is that the, each stage must be independent in what they're paying. It's, a, it's based on your capacity. Mm -hmm. But the worry is... They will say they don't have capacity. Many of the state governors are not very creative Correct. in seeing how they can show up their, their, their revenue. Correct. And this is a minimum wage for all the nations. Yes. I mean, all the states of, this, of yes. the nation. Yeah. Well, it is not peculiar to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. It is almost like what we lawyers talk about the chapter two of the Constitution. Yes. These are the, the irreducible fundamental objectives and directive principles of the state. Mm -hmm. And that if we're able to subscribe to this irreducible minimum, we will have good life, we will have... In any Better, case, yeah. in any case, our constitution also envisages. look, the language of the constitution is not even minimum wage alone. It talks about living wage mm. under section 16. Mm -hmm. And if the constitution, which we all subscribed to, which we all swore to uphold, is already talking of a, a living wage, how come that in 2024, we are still talking about, uh, no, we are still debating minimum. Look, let us not be carried away by the, by the way, the governor's forum is an aberration. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they, they need to also moderate their interventions in some of these things, lest we will question the, the, legit, there, yes, the legitimacy of their, of their yeah. utterances. Mm. The, the point is, is, is this, it is that we have seen the life of and culture and tendency of profligacy yeah. on the part of the ruling class. Right. And once we have known that, it will no longer be our excuse yeah. to begin to tolerate all of what we see. Yeah. Considering that if they are able to turn around a bit, turn a new leaf, look more, and it is even in their enlightened self-interest that this is done. How? Issue of 
insecurity mm. is connected. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I have to stop you here because we have a very short time today, but it's an ongoing conversation concerning minimum wage. It's not ended because we know labor is still in talks right. and hopefully they're waiting for the president to, um, to, to, to give his own um, executive order, but we'll see how that goes. But we'll definitely bring you back, sir, to talk more on this, but we just wanted to touch on it a bit just to have an idea of your thoughts as far as a lawyer yeah. to get a legal perspective on it. But thank you so much for... My pleasure. Thank, thank you. Let's go on a very short break. When we thank come you. back, we bring in our second guest. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your View will be right back.